When it comes to mega projects, nobody does it quite like the Saudis. The Saudi Public Investment Fund is even currently funding five projects that they've dubbed Giga Projects. Maybe that could be the name of my next channel, and they all are definitely going to get completed exactly as planned. <laughs> Sarcasm is obvious, but when you're always swinging for the fences, occasionally you're bound to miss. Today we're going to look at some of Saudi Arabia's mega projects or giga projects that never came to fruition. When you think of energy sources in the Middle East, the first thing that probably comes to mind is solar power. After all, the Middle East is a hot and sunny place, and it's not like there's any other natural fuel source that would be associated with the region. But, I mean, joking aside, the Saudis have been looking to wean their economy off of a reliance on oil and invest in cleaner energy. This idea had been talked about numerous times, including some false starts, but in 2017, Mohammed bin Salman began taking bids from companies that were interested in the solar project. But this was not going to be your ordinary solar power plant. The plan was to build the world's largest solar plant by a staggering margin. Once completed, the solar farm would generate 200 gigawatts of power. That's over 35 times more than the largest solar plant today and was about 200 times larger than the largest plant in 2017. This was not going to be a small task, but it wasn't out of the realm of possibility either. The global solar industry is able to produce over 100 gigawatts of solar panels each year and MBS planned for the plant to be completed by 2030. So they definitely could have purchased enough panels over the 12 years that the project was meant to take. That just meant they needed somewhere to actually put the solar farm. And it turns out this wasn't going to be a major hurdle either. Generating 200 gigawatts of power requires so many solar panels that it would have taken up about 5,000 square kilometers, an area larger than many major cities. At first glance, that sounds like it could be a major problem and may result in having to relocate citizens, but the vast majority of Saudi Arabia is totally uninhabited. Not all of that uninhabited land would be suitable for such a massive solar farm, but there certainly wasn't going to be any shortage of options of where to place it. Before we could continue today's video, let me take a moment to shout out one of my favorite sponsors, and that would be Sheath Underwear. These boxer briefs are an absolute game changer. Look, maybe you're tired of uh, boxer shorts being too loose, you got a bit too much movement down there, or for me personally, I just find briefs way too super tight and uncomfortable. Sheath are your savior. I'm wearing a pair right now. I have a clean pair here to show you, and uh, this is the best underwear you will ever buy. I, you buy one pair, right, and then you're like, oh, I see. I see what this is about. And then you buy more, and then the next thing you know, all of your underwear is sheath. And that's how it should be. You'll never look back. There's fat, stretchy fabric, so everything's super comfortable. It's moisture wicking, and their dual pouch system, you know, different parts for all your little man parts, or maybe not so little, um, they go where they should. And on a hot day, it's brilliant. Although, I just wear them all year round. Look, if you're not into the dual pouch system, they're still excellent. Just wear them as uh, regular boxer shorts, or briefs, or the thing that's better than both of those, and that would be sheath. Plus, they've got brand new bamboo and mesh options for even more cooling comfort. Weather won't stand a chance against sheath. Ready to experience the comfort revolution? Head over to sheathunderwear.com and treat yourself to the most comfortable underwear you'll ever wear. And guess what? If you use the promo code SIDEPROJECTS, you'll get a fantastic 20% off your order. So don't wait. Click the link in the description below or head to sheathunderwear.com and use the code SIDEPROJECTS for that amazing discount. And now back to today's episode. In March of 2018, it was announced that the Saudi government had a $200 billion deal with SoftBank, a Japanese multinational investing company. By itself, that announcement should have been a bit of a red flag. Both the Saudi government and SoftBank had previously announced major solar projects, only for them to be cancelled without building anything whatsoever. But they promised that this time was totally going to be different. At least that's what MBS and SoftBank wanted everybody to believe. However, it quickly became clear that there were problems with this mega project. To start, MBS had made a unilateral decision to make the deal with SoftBank, excluding top Saudi officials from the negotiations. Obviously, one of the advantages of being the crown prince of Saudi Arabia is having near limitless power, second only to the king. He's well within his rights to do pretty much anything he wants, be it signing a multi-billion dollar business deal or allegedly making pesky journalists disappear. 
allegedly. But excluding the entire energy ministry from negotiations on a major energy deal did cause people to lose a lot of faith in the project. And those people were right to lose faith, as the world's largest solar power plant never made it past an initial feasibility study. By the end of September, just six months after the deal with SoftBank was announced, it was declared that the project was being scrapped. Earlier this year, the Saudi government announced that they're giving it another go. They have once again unveiled plans to build the world's largest solar plant, except this time it's with the caveat of it being the largest single site solar plant. That would still put it in the top five overall, and this time the plan is much more realistic. Expected to open in 2025, this time the plant is only planned to generate a little over two gigawatts of power, roughly one percent of the previous goal. Even though the Saudis have had multiple failed attempts when it comes to building record-breaking solar farms, this next time is uh, definitely going to be different. Most of Saudi Arabia isn't really known as being a major tourist destination. As we previously stated, the majority of the country is uninhabited, a fact that doesn't make the country sound like it would be a mecca of tourism. But what Saudi Arabia does have is actual mecca, which draws millions of pilgrims every year. As part of the plan to diversify the nation's economy and lessen their reliance on oil, a push was made to turn Mecca into a Middle Eastern Las Vegas that they hoped would drive an increase in tourism. This push was being spearheaded by the country's largest construction company, Saudi Bin Laden Group, or SBG. And since many of you are probably distracted by that name, we'll just get it out of the way now and tell you that yes, that company was in fact founded by Osama Bin Laden's father and is still privately owned by the Bin Laden family. Yes, really. SBG began a number of projects in Mecca, but their piece de resistance was going to be the Abruj Kadai, the world's largest hotel, depending on how you rate largest hotels. It wasn't going to be anywhere near the tallest hotel, but it was going to shatter the record for the most hotel rooms. The plans for the hotel, including renderings of the completed project, were drawn up and construction began in 2015. Abruj Kadai was going to feature 12 towers constructed in a tight ring formation. It was such a tight formation that the artist renderings of the hotel make it appear that the view from the average room wouldn't actually let visitors see the historic sites of Mecca, they'd just be able to see into other people's hotel rooms. The towers were going to be 45 stories tall, with the central tower being the tallest domed building in the world. Ten of the twelve towers would feature four-star accommodations, and the remaining two towers would be five-star rooms reserved for special clientele. In total, there were going to be 10,000 hotel rooms, and the top five stories of the hotel would, of course, be reserved for the royal family. It's also designed as a mixed-use building, so other facilities were planned, including 70 restaurants, a shopping mall, a bus station, and a convention center. There were even four helipads on top of the hotel so all those five-star guests could arrive in style. In total, it was estimated that the project was going to cost $3.5 billion, but it never got that far. You know what, sir? I can't say that I am shocked. Construction began in 2015, and it was projected to be completed in 2017. However, construction stopped almost as quickly as it had begun due to financial difficulties in Saudi Arabia from falling oil prices. On September 11th, 2015, SBG was doing construction work on the Grand Mosque when abnormally high winds caused one of their cranes to collapse, killing 118 people and injuring about 400 more. Kim Salman banned SBG from taking on any new projects and ordered extensive reviews of their existing contracts. While the high winds were a major contributing factor, investigations showed that human error played a role as well, meaning that SBG was potentially going to be held liable. Though some individuals were found guilty of negligence, the company as a whole was ultimately acquitted. But until that verdict was made certain, it was probably not a wise time to be spending billions of dollars on construction. The appeals process ended in 2016, but construction remained halted. The price of oil had fallen to its lowest point since 2003, which was extremely extremely damaging to the Saudi economy. Finally, in 2017, the same year Abraj Kadai was supposed to have been completed, SBG announced that they were going to resume construction. Except, well, that never happened, and it seems that they just never spoke of it again. Barely any of the framework of the Abraj Kadai was completed back in 2015, and it has remained in the same condition since then, just seemingly forgotten. Stories still circulate online periodically about Saudi Arabia's soon-to-open largest hotel in the world, but no official announcements have been made regarding plans to resume construction. It's possible that the hotel, as well as many of SBG's projects, have been scrapped due to public outcry. The majority of pilgrims visiting Mecca would have 
never been able to afford a Braj Kodai, and there were a lot of complaints that the Las Vegas-style developments were going to destroy the historical significance of the site. SBG's renovations to the Grand Mosque have come into fire as well, as their planned expansion will make the mosque look more like an airplane terminal, with many visitors unable to even see the Kaaba. Though the plans for a Braj Kodai have not yet been officially cancelled, it is unlikely that the hotel is ever going to be completed. King Abdullah Economic City, or KAEC, was one of six mega projects announced by Saudi Arabia's late King Abdullah in 2005. These six economic cities were part of the Saudi Arabian General Investment Authority's 10 by 10 program to make Saudi Arabia one of the top 10 investment destinations by 2010. Located along the Red Sea, KAEC was the only one of these mega projects to actually be completed, with a total cost of around $35 billion and encompassing an area slightly larger than Washington, D.C. The goal of the economic cities was to transform the nation's economy away from their reliance on oil and to become a major player in other economic industries. And that overall goal might be beginning to sound a little bit familiar to you. Hoping to turn the country into a global business hub, KAEC was designed to be a city of the future. It was going to be sustainable and eco-friendly. The entire city would be planned out at once to provide ease of access to any desired facilities and everything would be built using state-of-the-art infrastructure. There were going to be hotels and residential areas the finest universities, advanced scientific R&D laboratories, and the best healthcare facilities in the world. Traveling was intended to be as convenient as possible as well. KEC was only an 80-minute drive to Mecca and a one-hour flight to any Middle Eastern capital city. It was also strategically placed along major shipping routes, with KEC's port providing plenty of opportunities of trade. The first stage of the city was completed in 2010, and the city was planned to be fully completed by 2020. It was also projected that the city would create a million jobs and would have a population of two million by the time it was completed. Shockingly, KEC was actually completed by 2018, making it one of the rare instances in which a mega project was actually finished ahead of schedule. However, the results were not nearly what King Abdullah would have hoped. As we said, it was believed that the city would have a population of 2 million by the time it was completed, but when construction of KEC ended in 2018, its population was only 7,000 people. The Saudi government either hasn't learned their lesson from these giant projects, or they've learned enough that they believe they can do it right next time. Their current plans are very similar to their past attempts at economic diversification, just with some new names. The 10 by 10 program has been replaced with Saudi Vision 2030. And their mega projects have been renamed to giga projects, but at the core, their goals and talking points seem to remain the same. For example, one of their current giga projects, The Line, which was previously discussed on this channel, has a flashy trailer showing off what the future city will look like. It promises to be eco friendly, being built around nature rather than over it, and it will have the best and most modern facilities available, and there won't be any roads or cars, because everything a person could ever need would be within a five minute walk of their house. It sounds like a really nice plan, but so did all their other previous plans that didn't come to fruition. We've seen the same story of Saudi mega projects repeat over and over again, but they promised that this time it's going to be different. For real this time. They promise. <laughs>